Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Robert Marzullo with Ram Studio Comics and bringing you another video today and this one is going to be focused on uh, more anatomy, the shoulder specifically. And so what I want to kind of do is start to do uh, uh, some of these videos. You know, I've done videos on hands, arm drawings, uh, you know, gesture drawings, stuff like that. But now what I want to do is kind of break down a few of these uh, into parts. Uh, which I think I've talked about that in the other videos, you know, and, and just kind of focusing on certain areas. One, to, you know, better my ability to create this stuff for my comics. Uh, shameless plug time, Blackstone Eternal, check it out on Indie Planet, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but then also to show you how to go about doing this yourself and, uh, you know, focusing on creating your stuff. And certain areas like the shoulder, uh, you know, have been known to give me some trouble, so I thought, you know, uh, it would be a good opportunity to show you and to uh, show myself. So what I do generally when I'm trying to get better at uh, musculature or anatomy is I will have some pictures posted up, uh, you know, to the side, you know, on a different screen. I, I'm fortunate enough to have a, a multi-screen setup here. Hopefully you do too, or if you're drawing on paper, then, you know, you just look at the screen or look at your uh, muscle magazine or anatomy book or whatever and just kind of uh, draw from that. But what I'll do is I'll fill in a little bit of the uh, opposing muscles. Uh, again, l using some reference uh, initially. <coughs> Excuse me. Even though I, uh, you know, stylize it as I'm as I'm drawing it. So I'm not trying to draw like a realistic um, anatomy. What I do is I look at, you know, real pictures, sometimes even my own arm, um, obviously not when I'm looking for a real defined arm but semi-defined um, I'll look at my own arm and you know grab uh, <clears throat> shots from that so use whatever you know you have in front of you or you know you can have access to but the trick is to you know if you're doing comics or cartoon work is that you're gonna you know stylize that a bit too so you're not trying to get just a perfect rendition of you know realism or something like that you're uh, you wanna have a firm understanding of where all this stuff goes, uh, start and beginning points of the muscles, you know, and you kind of, you know, add your own style from there, and obviously your own shading and cross hatching and whatever you're doing from there. So um, it's mainly just that you get an understanding of how the how the muscles contract, uh, you know, how they flow into the necks. You know, you see this portion of the uh, the shoulder, which I believe is the deltoid um, shoulder muscle, blends over to here kind of flows over top and around the uh, the tricep and actually the tricep goes below that and it kind of you know you can kind of see that in a lot of anatomy drawing uh, that's why I tend to use more of this rope style when, I, when I'm drawing muscles because you'll kind of see that it, it does this kind of effect quite a bit you know not the same shape and picture almost like a, the way rope would you know I guess that's another way to consider it, rope drawing the way that rope would flow into the you know the next piece and the next piece that's kind of like what muscles do so you know keep that little uh, pattern in your mind's eye when you when you draw this stuff and you'll start to see how one muscle goes in front of the next flows in and then the part where it looks like it disappears is just the fact that it's recessing back into the form and another one is taking prominence and flowing in front of it you know like you would get that uh, little muscle there you got these ones that pop off from the form but I want to stay specific to the shoulder so one of the things that I try to do when drawing a, a shoulder there's a few elements that I look at one of which is that the shoulder kind of points down here in between the bicep and tricep um, some people's uh, shoulders do that differently a little you know obviously there's a lot of variation in the human body and from person to person and then the fact that when it comes back here or around here it kind of rounds away and it goes off into the distance you know which I call a horizon effect but when you're drawing I kind of perceive everything as a horizon effect how it disappears behind something else um, so here's your your trapezoid um, I think and then it kind of flows around and behind there and here your your visual is more right here so you can see the entirety of the the back of the shoulder here uh, then the next thing that it would do is it would it would have an effect uh, to the lat I believe the lat would come from below and underneath a little bit and it would kind of do one of these numbers something like that 
and you know you kind of get these little bulges back here even um, but you know this is where about where the shoulder would disappear and that's a little bit too um, <clears throat> Uh, pumpkin like I guess I always always watch out for drawing pumpkin shoulders if that makes any sense to you it's just you know sometimes it's the amount of line work that you put into it you know you want a very defined character but you don't want to be tracing every muscle I'll get rid of some of these construction lines now so you can see a little bit better and I'll just tend to erase away some of the lines and then put some back and that way it gives me a better visual of uh, you know what I think should stay in the drawing and along with you know starting to cross hatch and bring out some depth and figure out how how mat how much mass each one of these uh, areas of the shoulder have to them and you can kind of define that by the size of your cross hatch lines and the intensity of those and your shadowing obviously but or black shadow your uh, your big bulky shadows so that'll be the first one now this is obviously a perspective from the back of the arm and like I said I'm not gonna uh, get into too much detail of each one of these other than the shoulder area and then I want to kind of point out the shapes that you should look for as I draw these so uh, like I said you, you want to stay away from an overly pumpkin looking shape to your shoulders it looks very unnatural and then I think the you know and I like zooming back like that and taking a look at it sometimes you can get a better visual of uh, what might be wrong there and I think what looks wrong to this one is that it, it's too uh, too many even shapes for for a human shoulder so uh, which in comics you'll see a lot of people do a lot more of that but what I'll try is I'll get rid of this section of the shoulder and I'm going to just try to add a little bit more uh, of a different shape to this portion of the shoulder like this and see if that looks any more natural yeah see to me that actually looks more natural now and the reason being, like I said, it, it looked too much like, I'm going to point out these shapes, it looked too much like I was doing this. And see how that's just too even, too many uh, even circular circular shapes. Muscles don't do that. They, they flow in and out, they contract, they bulge. Um, so there's got to be more variation into that, that design. So uh, hopefully that you understand what I'm saying there or trying to explain anyways. Okay, so let's try another perspective. Okay, now from this uh, perspective, we're going to do like a front uh, angled shot to the shoulder. So always kind of start with the, uh, you know, the mannequin drawing of the, you know, shoulder, elbow, wrist area. You know, just a basic rough to show my positioning. You know, maybe the chest comes out this way on an angle. Uh, let's see, on the shoulder, I usually kind of draw in a shape like this. To me, this is what I see as my basic shape when I draw the shoulder. Basic bicep. Uh, bicep's kind of like this little rounded half football there. Same thing with the tricep, but shorter and, and up further to the back of the arm. You know, I'll just kind of block in some of those shapes just to, you know, get an initial layout of the arm before I start getting into more detail. Clavicle comes down like that. The chest actually usually divots right here, so it's good to kind of show that. So the shoulder will come in, it'll divot, and then come out to the chest like that. And the chest always does this little thing where the, the muscles roll out like that, so it's good to take note of. But again, back to the shoulder, that's the focus of this. This part of the shoulder, to me, is always larger, uh, more large and in charge up front. Uh, takes more notice and more definition. And I think that, um, I think that the, what they kind of do is they kind of teardrop like this. And this one, the reason it shows lower is it's kind of down like this. Teardrops back up and back and forth. I think that's a, another series of shapes to kind of take notice of um, and then you'll notice that the shoulder when it does come lower here it kind of you know segments a little bit like that and I'm not going to overly define that I'm, I, and I'm going to erase these lines but I just wanted to show you that that's kind of another series of shapes that you can see in the shoulder and help you remember it and make it look uh, a little bit more realistic 
and again the effect that it goes around the uh, trapezoid or behind the back that you know remembering that the the shoulder goes around the form like this from that top angle you know something like that not so smooth and perfect as that u-shape but that's kind of what it does like this that's kind of the shape of the shoulder somewhat and the trapezoid would come in like that and we start getting the little stringy neck muscles and veins and stuff like that in there okay so like I said I'm going to erase these lines my construction lines I just wanted to show off that shape a little bit more but again I don't want the traced effect of this so even this connected line there is too much even for an overly de defined character uh, you want to get away from doing that because it, it comes out by the time you add all your other layers and your inking and it t tends to look very unnatural so you want to you know less is more sometimes so So if I did want to show the defineness of this shoulder, I'd probably come into here, pick a few of these lines, add a little bit of line weight to, you know, a few sections of it, maybe a little bit of the, the string, you know, lines from the muscles. And generally when you see like these uh, more pointed edges to the muscle, that's going to be in a more flexed pose anyways so that's the other thing you want to practice on is doing relaxed poses and then flex poses because um, you know if, if your character just run around flexed all day long it's going to look very unnatural and not as cool and refined or whatever so you want to practice doing a little of both like one of the things I really want to start focusing on in my books is uh, drawing a lot more you know overweight characters and you know flabby characters you know more true to life you know <laughs> just not everybody's running around all tight like a taiga you know just kind of soften a few of the characters up so there's another perspective of the shoulder now again I'll critique my own work here because to me that's actually looking very flat and it looks very stretched so um, and the forearm proportion is definitely really off but again I'm trying not to focus too much on the other aspects of it because you know I could get into hours and hours of drawing just to make things you know more correct um, or focus on each part of the uh, the arm even um, but let me let me erase that start again forgive me I'm I'm not perfect far from it all right, so and another thing to uh, take note of when you're when you're doing this and you know looking at some reference and stuff like that is that the muscles, even from character to character and bend to the arm, even they twist a little bit differently, but they do kind of twist around the form. So that's the other thing is that other way that I had it drawn looked too straight and up and down, um, you know. Depending on the angle and the position of the arm, it is going to twist. Shoulders are going to twist around the form. So that looks a little bit better. Not much, but a hair better. And then I would show some depth of the uh, shoulder by shading the lower part here. And then maybe shading back here. Something like that. start dropping in some line work and some shadows and you know really trying to figure out the uh, the mass of each each shape in that uh, that shoulder just like that just finding these little shapes and working it out so okay so there's another pose again I don't want to get too over dramatic in the other aspects of it like shading or detail work I want this to just be mainly focused on the shape of the shoulder okay so there's a back shot kind of a front angled shot let's see what else okay let's try a very side shot uh, so like the arm is extended out 
and up, and that the lat and the position of the body is re you know flowing backwards like this. Okay, so again, you know, drawing the kind of initial shape of the shoulder. Initial bicep. The tricep stretches out really far at this point. Uh, makes that connection here. There is a, keep in mind there's a separation from this angle. The shoulder kind of ends somewhere around here, back here, and then the tricep and the lat take over down here. So that's important when drawing this, uh, this particular perspective. Alright, something like that. And there's always a relationship, just so you know, from here to here from the wrist to the shoulder and you can kind of do that little action with your own arm and and see where your thumb lines up to your shoulder it's good to take little mental notes of stuff like that when you're drawing this it really helps out I think it's kind of I think it's called the human cannon gauging parts of the body with other parts of the body I want to say you know don't quote me on this but I want to say da Vinci and the Renaissance artist made that famous and developed it but I could be wrong our history isn't the strongest so okay so again the like I pointed out in the other ones you kinda have this this middle muscle is lower here and from this perspective I think you'd want to kinda show the muscles rounding kind of an upward arc like this I think would look more natural and then taking note that these ones are gonna be uh, more recessed back behind the trapezoid and further back on the the back muscles here and this one stretches forward and ends in between the tricep and bicep something like this so you see I'm still having that problem uh, drawing that almost pumpkin like shape it's it's uh, something that's kind of stuck in my mind and I have to work on you know getting better with my anatomy so that I quit doing that because see how it's very smooth and you know too repetitive again you know there's not enough uh, change in definition and these two muscles aren't going to line up identical there's no way so uh, I would imagine this one's going to be further back like this this one's going to be maybe more uh, protruded or arced up like that see that to me looks more natural even though I don't know if that's correct uh, but I would assume that that's you know from this angle that's what you'd see more of the shoulder and then you'd probably even get another little string muscle or something like that and then your trapezoid would come into here the the other relationship is to keep in mind that the trapezoid always kind of points and finishes off in between the shoulders so there's another relationship between those muscles I don't even know if you'd see any of the chest. I think you'd see another little piece of the shoulder right there. Something like that. And this, uh, it almost looks like the arm is stretched this way, so you might get a little bit of flexing here. You can see a little bit of those string muscles like that. Or if you're drawing, you know, an overly ripped superhero, you could just put those in anyways. I mean, like I said, you're going to see that a lot in comics where you know they're just ripping you know st stretching and uh, ripping every muscle you know it's like the the guy's just running around totally ticked off and flexed everywhere he goes but hey it's comic books you can get away with that and I think the tricep the tricep actually it's kind of weird about it. it goes like this and there's this little middle piece like that and that's why it's a tricep um, you know it's it's funny because in most people you it only looks like two muscles back there but there's this tiny little guy up the back that you know forms a tricep and then obviously the bicep two of them here things like that so that's the uh, that's kind of another shape to keep in mind right there with this one. Um, let me zoom back. It still doesn't look quite right to me, but yeah, I think I just got it overly lined out a little bit, but 
you know, it's it 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 would work. It's not a it's not a perfect one. I think what would possibly happen is I think this portion of the arm would be less visible. I think you're going to get more of this from this angle. This middle portion of the uh, the deltoid is going to stand out more. And I think it wants to point out more like that. But, but you know, check your own anatomy books. Check your muscle magazines. You know, draw your own stuff and see what parts of the uh, the shapes stick out to you. Um, you know, and some people are got a better grasp on on muscles. You know, um, I try to draw them a lot and try to study them a lot because there's so much to learn from them and and so many little delicate intricacies to the way that they work and relate to one another so there's a lot to learn there it's not an overnight process for sure so don't beat yourself up if uh, you don't just start drawing amazing muscles your first uh, couple tries out it's it's gonna take a little while I mean you look at the guys that do draw uh, comics and you know they're drawing muscles day in day out 10 hours a day always putting that stuff in their books and you know there's still some guys in the industry that just don't have that firm of a grasp on anatomy. I mean, some are just amazing, and it's it's like, wow, will I ever get to draw as good as that guy? I don't know, but um, the point is that you just don't give up, and you keep uh, keep striving to, uh, you know, I always look at it like this. It's not a race against everybody else. It's a race against yourself, so um, don't worry about everybody else. I mean, learn from them, definitely, uh, but don't get depressed when you don't achieve in certain areas like they do. Uh, the race is to better yourself, and and you'll get a little bit more reward and gain out of that perspective. I hope. I hope I didn't just give you some bad info. It worked for me anyways. Okay, so there's uh, there's that. Um, let me see. So it gives us a back shot, kind of a front angle. That's uh, kind of a back, but side arm pose. Um, I guess let's draw one that's just straight forward, uh, like you're looking straight on at a, at a character, and then we'll call it good. Okay, so a straight on shot. Uh, let's see, it's going to be, again, we got the shoulder, or bicep, forearm. And this is just like you're looking right at the character. So you're not going to see that U shape as much up here. The shoulder kind of does this kind of thing like this. I wish I could describe some of this stuff better, but that's all I got. Uh, let's see, and you get a little bit of the tricep kind of poking around like that. Now the thing to keep in mind, the shoulder from this perspective kind of veins around or wraps around like this. So I'll draw a little bit of that in there for my uh, construction lines. And the bicep, um, depending on the, the position of the forearm, because it actually shifts based on, you'll notice if you watch the relationship from your thumb to your bicep, uh, it kind of points the same way a lot of times so it's good to keep uh, keep watch on that so let's see this muscle kind of strings around here this one around here this, this one goes from the wrist up through there all right getting too much into the forearm again sorry I just really like drawing muscles I can't help it okay so the shoulder the focal point of what we're doing here okay so the shoulder you know a lot also has a, a strong relationship to the chest if not you know pretty much consider them interconnected because uh, they do they kind of pass like this the chest kind of rolls down and under like that um, <clears throat> now from this perspective this shoulder uh, this bulkier muscle would be the main portion of the drawing right there it's not uh, quite as high as you see in these other shots um, based on the fact that the arm is relaxed down but it's still the most dominant from this perspective or mostly in this perspective and then you just want to keep in mind that the shoulder kind of comes up and around like this like that and I don't know from this angle if you'd see this back part like that from here it would just kind of come up and you know, start rolling up into the trapezoid like that, and it would disappear, you know, somewhere in there, and the chest kind of rolls down like that a little bit, and I think from the position of the way the forearm is here, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, bicep would 
have it split or whatever somewhere in there and that little middle part of the muscle which I don't unfortunately I don't know what that's called I'm gonna have to study that but uh, if it's called anything but there's that division right there from the tricep to the bicep and that's kind of where the shoulder you know points down and in, into that area and again um, I would start with the most defined um, massive part of the shoulder which to me is here and down here so I just kind of sh you know throw some line work in there to kind of start bringing that out and what I usually do with uh, parts like this just for you comic illustrators out there or I guess illustrators in general I generally shade this and I'll break up into smaller lines like that to me that signifies that the muscle is more defined and shadowed down here and less defined less shadowed there and breaks away it's just a kind of a quick easy way to do your shading and show that separation or you know the lack of uh, where it would smooth out into the the mass or whatever so hopefully that helps you and you know then just keep working these lines out and figure out how much uh, definition that you want to show from transition to transition And if you were doing the actual muscles, then you'd see a bunch of little, you know, obviously like veined little lines like this. And actually what I'll do is I'll take red and kind of draw that in there real quick. So it kind of shows you the direction more of the way the, the muscles uh, react. And they kind of... this and and it shows you too like when you're showing an overly defined bodybuilder or something like that that's why you see you know some of this line work in their their uh, muscles is because they're they're getting so defined and their uh, skin is getting so thin down their fat contents getting so thin down that you're able to see this definition in the muscle and so that's that's basically kind of gross but you know cool in a sense you know those are not overdoing I guess but the whole point of bodybuilding is overdoing it so yeah you just kinda you know that just shows you the direction and then you know when you have a more defined line like this that shows the major separation of the two masses in the muscle so sometimes it's good to draw like this just for practice and it gives you, you know, you're just trying to bombard your brain with these details and really soak it up so that when you don't have reference, when you go to draw this out of your mind's eye, it all comes together and you remember it all. So doing what I'm doing here, even though it seems kind of like I'm just scribbling, and, you know, I'm bored or something, it's, uh, it's mainly that I'm trying to push this into my train of thought, that I'm going to remember this, uh, you know, and I'm never going to draw an arm this detailed unless I'm drawing a character uh, called skinless man you know that's running around saving the day with no skin which <laughs> actually wouldn't be a bad idea for a character that's probably been done but anyways um but it's it's mainly making myself have a, a firm grasp on where all this anatomy goes and this this the musculature one's musculature okay so anyways there it is hopefully that's helped you hopefully learned something from this video if you have be sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends in the art communities and you know help me get the word out there because I would like to keep bringing these videos to everybody and uh, if they're good then let me know if they suck then I guess let me know that too and I, uh, I'll try to get better and I really do appreciate everybody watching and checking back on the you know the work the progress of the videos and be sure to check out Blackstone Eternal if you get a chance and uh, have a great day keep drawing but most of all have fun take care